transitional way to pour a pint of Guinness is in two stages. It's estimated, I think, that the length of time from start to finish of the pour is one minute and 29 seconds, I think, but I might, <laughs> my timing might be a little bit out on that. Wow. And basically the technique for doing is your glass has to be angled underneath the tap in close to in or around 45 degrees. Uh, the first pour initially is just straight back and as you can see, as the beer comes out, everybody knows that Guinness is two-tone, black on the bottom, uh, creamy white head on top. But when you pour it initially, it comes like this. Uh, you can start the clock now if you like and see if I'm right for well, time. I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> but you can actually see how the beer separates and it will start to settle. You'll see the solid color developing at the bottom and then it'll work its way up to the top. Uh, when it, the colour separates, so you have two definitive colours, which we'll see shortly, that's when you finish off the pour for the Guinness. Um, in order to achieve this, the, the actual Guinness tap is different from your regular beer tap. Um, it has an attachment, this little piece here. Inside is housed a small metal disc that's perforated that as the beer flows through, it agitates the beer, and that's why we have the, the brown mm. color that we see when we come out. And now, as the beer settles back in, we can see the two def definitive colors separating. The Guinness in America is slightly, slightly different from the Guinness at home in Ireland because the Guinness in uh, America is pasteurized. Um, we have a system installed here, as you can see on our beer tower, we have 12 beer lines. But through the system, uh, we actually have 14 lines running. As opposed to, or in addition to having our cold box downstairs where we actually house the beer barrels, we have a separate unit, a cooling unit for a glycol system that sits outside the cold room that has its own temperature control. And because we have 12 towers, we have two lines with this cooling agent that circulates constantly through its own cooling mechanism. And each one of those two lines runs along with six of our beer lines. So as the beer travels from the cold room to the tower, it's constantly being chilled from this separate cooling unit. Um, it helps, uh, temperature with beer is very important. Um, different beers have different temperatures. Ideally, Guinness is served between 38 degrees and 41 degrees. Um, so we have, in addition to the temperature in the cold box, which accommodates some of the other beers, our glycol unit, the temperature on it, we have it regulated at 40 degrees. So that when the beer is traveling, that's the temperature that we kind of we pull it to, to get the correct consistency and temperature to pull the beer. Now, if you, wonder, if you can see now, the beer has settled to that degree. We've gone over our one minute, 29 seconds because we were explaining the other mechanism. Normally, traditionally to finish, you raise the pint to the tap, push forward, and when your beer comes to the top, there it is. Perfect pint. Great. Great. Slightly discolored again because of the mix of the, of the top of the beer in a short amount of time, separates again, and when it separates again into two distinct colors, that's when it's ready for consumption.